So we're going to look at very quickly how to make a program in Python that will translate something into Morse code. Now if you're not familiar with Morse code, it basically looks like this when you write it down. But that wasn't the point of Morse code. Morse code was about transferring a message over distance through typically a wire through electrical impulses. And so even though it looks like that when you write it, that's not really what it was designed to be. And of course, you know, you can look up more on it. The other way that it's sometimes used is with flashes of light instead of through a wire. Now, when we're talking about through a wire, that would be with little beep sounds. And you can easily find that in different places if you'd like to hear it. Now, if we go back to the images here, and we just look at one of these really quickly, one of the first things to note is that different letters are different lengths. And that's just kind of the way it was designed. Um, it was designed to try to be transmitted very quickly using only two types of sounds, a short sound and a long sound. And so it was, it was very limited to that. And this was early on old technology, so you didn't have the type of technology we have now. So you couldn't have a variety of sounds. It was basically one noise and you varied the length. If you want to look at some of these charts, you can kind of give an idea of how it works. You could create sort of this this tree. And so if we're looking at this tree structure, an E in Morse code is one dot. An I would be two dots. An A would be one dot, one dash. So everything on the left, all of these left choices are additional dots. Every right choice is a dash. And you can get this intermingling to find specific letters. Now, they could have tried to make all the characters the same length, but it would have taken a lot longer to transmit messages because if you think about this mathematically, to end up with 26 characters or more if you want punctuation, you're going to have to do, let's see, so 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So you'd have to have, you'd basically be just using this row it's going to take a lot longer to transmit because all of the letters are going to be a lot more sounds, a lot more dots or dashes than using this tree structure. Now when we look at these dots and dashes, if you're thinking about using like the standard alphabet, the standard like keyboard input, we often use that as like a dash or a period. So using the string method we used last time, we could create a very simple way of encoding our message into Morse. Now, I'm not saying this is the best method. I'm just saying that it works for right now. So I have my message here, just a random string. I have a couple comments, and I have a print at the end. I have temp1 written right here, but it doesn't really matter what it is for right now as long as it matches what you end up with. So the first thing that I would do I take this message, I use a replace method to change the A into a dot dash. And we could try using this tree to find everything, but we could also just use a source like this. So dot dash, a B would be a dash dot dot dot. So we can just go through all the letters. Now keep in mind when you do this string replace method, it's not resaving this transformation into that original string. You have to create a new variable, so that's what I've done here. When I do the next letter, if I go back to this message, this original string, it won't have this change, so I need to reuse that variable that I assigned here. And I just need to keep going down the way. Now I could create 26, 30, however many letters and punctuation I want to use, that many variables, or I could alternate. And I'm going to choose to alternate. So now I'm going to use temp2. So temp2, replace with the right one. And I can just keep going down the list. Now I do have a space after each one of my letters because that's typically how we see it. If we look at like just a Morse code converter, and we type in a message
you're going to see space between each character and then a slash between each word and so I'm replicating that so I could go all the way down the alphabet and do that which I've already done earlier so there all of that is and I just go all the way down the alphabet and I've even done a little bit of punctuation so I have my string here and if this works it should kick out Morse code for it so let's give it a try so there we go that looks okay but let's see if it actually worked. So my very first letter was an I. And if I go to I, I should have a dot dot and a space. And I don't have that. So let's talk about what happens. The issue actually is when I added punctuation. So if I remove this, so I'm just going to delete it temporarily. And I can do Command Z in a minute. And I run it again. This looks much more accurate. We have the I, the two dots there. The next letter is a apostrophe, which I didn't convert, an M, which we have here, so there's the M, and etc. When I bring that punctuation back in, what's happening is it's not going through the string and saying, okay, where's an I, and let me convert the I, where's an apostrophe, let me convert the apostrophe, where's the M, let me replace that. It's not doing that. It's going through the string and it's saying, where's an A and it finds an A and it converts it where's a B it finds the B it converts it C etc so when it gets all the way down here to the period and it tries to convert it it's found all of these other periods in the line and it replaces all of those and you get something not accurate we get period period a break for a word and then whatever else comes next so this order is important now to the computer, the order is arbitrary. It doesn't matter if this comes first, if I start with a Z, if I start with a Y. So I can arrange this any way that I want. And if I just move this around a little bit, let's put the punctuation at the start. Looks good. We need to start with message. Oops. Message goes there temp1 goes there and then when we get to here ooh, we'll just call this temp3 for right now so we don't end up with that weird overlap and now if we run this that looks much better this should be an I if we go to I that's an I this should be an apostrophe which there that is, that looks right, that should be an M, there's our space. So the order in which you choose to do this, because of the method we used, is important. So you might have to rearrange things a little bit to get it to work the way you want. The next step, obviously, would be to take this and convert in the other direction. Can we take this string, put it in here, flip all of these around, so we're looking for this character and replacing it with that. We could just do this all the way down. And will we get back our original message? We could just keep going all the way down. Now you're going to run into the same issue that we saw with the punctuation. Some of these smaller letters, like the E, being just a single dot, as soon as we try to translate this, let's just go ahead and give it a try. I know it's not complete, but you'll get the points. and we try running it, even with things incomplete, we're going to get lots of E's because it has now replaced every period that it found with an E. So once again, the order of these doesn't matter to the computer, but it is going to matter to our answer. So going back to this chart here, you're going to want to start with the lower letters or numbers if you chose to use those you want to start with this bottom section so 
We'll start with the punctuation first because those have the longest strings and move our way up and we would use our shortest strings, the E and the T at the very end. So that way it's not replacing every single period it finds in here with an E and every single dash in here with the T. Actually, let's go ahead and flip that real fast just so you can see how bad it can get if you're not careful. It's perfect. So you're going to have to arrange these to create the conversion back into English from the longest characters at the top to the shortest characters at the very bottom. And of course you're going to have to make sure that all of your variables over here match up and are in the right order so that way it's going in that same order and not pulling back from the start or pulling back from somewhere weird. Once again, this isn't necessarily the best method, but it's a simple method based on what we've done so far.